Hello everyone and welcome back to another session of Elden Ring PvP and another weapon showcase. Today we are taking a look at the Iron Cleaver. This is probably my favorite axe class weapon in the game and for a few very, very good reasons. Getting started with the basics, this weapon is dropped by the misbegotten enemies who wield it and it does take a little bit of farming in order to get, but it is well worth the effort. The weapon requires 15 strength and 7 dexterity to wield, and it weighs 6 units. The skill on the weapon by default is Wild Strikes, and at plus 25 on the heavy upgrade path it has a physical base damage of 253 and an A scaling in strength. There is no dexterity scaling. This weapon also is quite decent on my Muscle Mage build on the magic upgrade path. It has a pretty good amount of base damage being 224 on both physical and magic, and it has a D scaling in strength, an E scaling in dexterity, and a B scaling in intelligence. So that heavy intelligence scaling is pretty decent overall, but the high base damage of it actually makes it quite a viable weapon on that type of build. So why would you use this weapon? Well. Two words. Forward momentum. This weapon is amazing because of how much forward momentum the moveset has. It has unique R2 attacks, as you guys have very clearly seen. They chase people down, and the longer you hold R2, the more you'll chase them until you eventually do your slash. With that, the R2 actually does work with the Axe Talisman. So, simply by just holding R2, you're building up damage from charging with your charging attack. Now that said, that can lead to the damage values uh, being pretty high. Usually you'll see damage around 800-ish, it's not uncommon to see that. Um, really anything less than 600 is more uncommon than anything else. So it's pretty darn good to say the least. Now with those R2 attacks, of course they're good at chasing people down, and they will cause people to panic roll, and they can roll catch decently well, so that's nice as well. Now, aside from all of that, the rest of the moveset, the R1s are quite quick, they are really fast chops, and while they don't combo, they are still good to throw in there to keep pressure on your opponent. One thing that I've had a good bit of luck with is after landing an R2 attack, just throw out an R1 immediately. Your opponent will do one of two things. They'll either get hit by the attack, or they will roll away, or sometimes both actually will happen, and after they do roll away, they typically roll backwards to get away from you, and when you, they do that, that puts them in a good position to have you chase them down. You can do that with a regular running attack, you could get fancy and do a ravioli step into a R1 if you wanted to get fancy with it, or you can just use something like Lion's Claw or uh, Sword Dance or just another R2 even to chase them down. It works quite well, you've seen it a handful of times in this video already. People react somewhat predictably when they get hit by the R2 with this weapon. They don't really roll towards you or roll sideways very frequently, they 99% of the time roll backwards, and that's to your benefit. If they did roll to your side, then you'd have a bit of a harder time, because your R1s are very linear. So that's something to keep in mind. The R1 attacks, while they are quick, don't track well, and they are very straightforward. So that's, in a way, a con of the weapon, but it's really not a big one. Now, with all of that said, as far as other pros of the weapon, I find that there's really not too much else worth saying. A few skills that I do like with it, of course, I mentioned Sword Dance and I mentioned Lion's Claw. Other good ones, of course, would be War Cry and Barbaric Roar. Those are always nice. Barbaric Roar does get its three-hit true combo with it, that's a nice thing to have. And Spinning Slash is fine, but between Spinning Slash and Sword Dance, I prefer Sword Dance because it has more forward momentum. And as I said, people more often than not roll backwards after they get hit, as opposed to rolling towards your sides or trying to get behind you. If they did that more often, then Spinning Slash would be more beneficial for this weapon. But seeing as they don't, Sword Dance is the way to go between those two specific skills. Now, as far as cons of the weapon are concerned, I suppose we can say that the weapon is somewhat short, but because of how much forward momentum this weapon's moveset has, 
it's barely a concern. Hardly noticeable, barely even a problem. Other than that, I do wish that there were a bit more hyper armor on the R2 attacks. You have an okay-ish amount, but you really can't trade hits with them very reliably, and it would be nice if you could do that a little bit more easily. That said, if you really wanted to, I suppose you could use an Iron Jar Aromatic, and you still have the standard amount of movement with your R2 attacks. It doesn't slow you down at all. So that's actually quite viable and somewhat reminiscent of the uh, Dark Souls 1 build where you'd use a Butcher Knife and Iron Flesh, and you'd still be able to run in on your opponents to chase them down. That's basically still an option in this game if you use the Iron Jar Aromatic with this weapon or with the Celebrant's Cleaver that shares the same moveset. Difference between the two of them being that this one has a bit better range. Uh, I don't know if there's actually anything else aside from that and the damage that's different offhand. I haven't looked into the Celebrant's uh, Cleaver, to be perfectly honest, so it is what it is. Either way, it's a very fun weapon to use. I can't recommend it enough. I had an amazing time using it and it is just going to be one that is on my regular rotation. It's very fun, very reliable, it has a lot of forward momentum, so it works very well with the aggressive playstyle that I like to utilize. So overall, I would say if you have an aggressive playstyle or you're trying to learn to be more aggressive with your playstyle, try out this weapon, it'll do a good job for you. With all the forward momentum on its attacks, with its R2s, with how good it's running R1 is, given that it's a slash, a sweeping slash instead of an overhead chop that is good at hitting people who are running around as well. There's just a lot with this weapon that makes it very good for people who have aggressive movesets. So, it is what it is. Either way, there is one fight left after this one. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy the video, then please do leave a like, leave a comment, tell me if you guys have used this weapon. Let me know what you think about it, and yeah, that's all I've got. So again, thank you all for stopping by, and I'll see you all next time.